All right, lucky, 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 lucky me, Beer Bottom Bliss. I'm um, here with our good friends from the Bear Creek Smokehouse, Texas. Mar Marshall, Texas. Is it? <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> and so, <laughs> hey, I like your bandana, by the way, today. Oh, uh, well, thank you. I, I wore, uh, looking, looking stylish up there in New York City. Blue jean you know, shirt. I, you wow. know, I'm just trying to trying to keep up with the crowd, you know. Uh, you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you might ask me to dance something, and I might have to pull it off. Uh, <laughs> well, you're going to actually, you're going to, you're going to cook, you're going to cook a brisket and I've already tried your brisket and, and I know brisket. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> my grandfather was a butcher and I know great. And then it's a very, I'm, I'm a Jewish background. Brisket is like the, uh, the gold <laughs> standard in, in our, in our community. It's, it's the Thanksgiving. We have it for Thanksgiving. We have it for other holidays. Your brisket is magnificent. So. Tell us what's going to happen here, and who who are we talking to now? No, well, okay. I've I've got a lot of family here with me right now, which um, you know that's what the cookbook is all about: food, family, and faith. And um, so I'm tickled to death to have these guys here with me today. I'm going to go around here and tell you who everybody is. Um, sitting to my far left here is my daughter Erin. Um, she's our oldest child. She lives in the Dallas area and she happens to be in for the weekend. I said, Hey, come join us. She brought daddy cupcakes from Dallas. So, um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't get any better than that. And, uh, she was, she was wanting to go fishing. I said, Aaron, you got to stay. We're going to interview with some people from New York in a little while. So, um, Thank she you. decided to stay and talk to you, Paul. Thank you. Um, so anyway, and then, um, this is my wife, Tracy. Um, Hi, you may have met, we yeah, may have met. We met briefly, yes. Yes, and then right here to my right is um, one of our other daughters, Krista. Hi, Krista. Hey. Krista, Krista graduated from the Art Institute with a design degree, and so um, here at Bear Creek, she does our buying of all of our products, um, that we, all of our gift items, and does a lot of our merchandising. And then uh, <laughs> this boy right here is my son-in-law, Matt. Um, and he, he helps me on the weekends. We, we're, we've already thrown some brisket on and fixing to demo some more here in a little bit, show you how to do some things. Is this book considered this wonderful, phenomenal, more than a cookbook book, uh, uh, part of your merchandising? Because uh, this yeah. book is just, it is, it is gorgeous. <laughs> Any page I go to in this book, I either have to learn about you all, I learn about the community, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just my, about your family. I, I mean, you guys have been in doing this kind of work for, for how long now? This is, this is season 77. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But, Only um, 77. You can't, can't make you know, it longer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it started in 1943, and I think I've told you this. Um, my granddad and dad started this a long time ago, and you know, it hasn't always been this good or this popular or, or whatever, but, you know, they sowed a lot of seeds back in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And, you know, um, my generation and these kids' generations, we're starting to reap the benefits now. So we don't at all ever give ourselves all the credit because, um, you know, that was something that was started 77 years ago and even longer, actually. But... Um, been a lot of hard, a uh, lot of hard years, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and that sort of thing. But you know, um, we become this wonderful family business now, and it's thriving. And you know, we've been blessed, and we're just happy to be here and be happy to. We're happy to be talking to you. Uh, I'm happy to talk is, to you. Yeah. How about each one of you? You would like to say something? They would, Aaron. Just that, just that, you may have to ask them some questions. I, they well, don't Aaron, run their mouth like their dad. Aaron, <laughs> so, Aaron, uh, let's, let's get right to the heart of things. So, uh, did you make yes, the cupcakes? Sir. No, I bought the cupcakes. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Check that. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to buy things because yeah. I like to buy uh, for the Bear Creek because uh, it's done. <laughs> That's right, it's already ready to go. So yeah. tell us, what do you do down in Dallas? I'm a hygienist. So I work in a, in a pediatric office and clean little kiddos' teeth all day. Oh, really? Oh, yes, that's sir. a nice thing. Yeah. Well, good that's for you. Thing. How are our kids doing? Are they, uh, they paying attention to their teeth? They're pretty good. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> They're doing a good job. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, well, that's, that's good. All right, let's go right down to uh, your lovely wife. Hi, I'm Tracy, and I just keep him in line, and it's a full-time job plus overtime. <laughs> Wait up there, baby, so that you see after you. So, Tracy, what, what do you do, if, I, if this is a, a right or a wrong, what do you do down at the farm? Is that, is that uh, well, I herd cattle, buffalo, because they try to get out of the gate when I come down to work. Um, <laughs> let's see, I have to get frogs out of the swimming pool. Um, I, <laughs> And then keeping him in line. Like I said, that's the biggest job. And she pays all the bills. Oh, yeah. I pay the bills. Okay. So he and, spends and, the money, you pay and, the bills. And, and all of our customers get to see this grill when she walks in the front door. <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that's strategic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your other lovely daughter. I'm going to pull. I'm going to kind of tilt this around just a little okay, bit. Okay, perfect. I get the fun job of making this place pretty I feel like I feel like I have the best job <laughs> the most fun because you do interior design with the place I mean yes uh, sir I um, merchandise everything and get it out on the floor and um, change you know displays around and just try to try to get things off the floor and sold so whatever I can do to help didn't you just build or the, the, maybe you had it before some kind of a, a, a a banquet area or a, yes, you add it on to the to the to the place right so yep. that must have been a uh, interior design job to uh, yeah, make yeah, it look dad, good yeah dad asked for my input with that and um it's been we've had something every weekend which is great aha uh -huh. so we have like uh weddings and affairs and weddings um there's a, a washerboard yeah. tournament yeah cornhole tournament yeah. cornhole, cornhole tournament. tournament cornhole tournament um, we've had some corporate uh, parties here where we, you know, companies will rent the place and then we, um, you know, cater. Um, so, you know, <laughs> we're cheap. We'll do just about anything here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's cheap. I think that's wise. So oh, yeah. We, that's, I think we, ca we cater a broad spectrum of people and um, interests and all that sort of thing. We're actually having a big chili cook off here tomorrow. Um, I, I remember you telling me that. And I got some yeah. of your chili powder, which I haven't used yet, but I'm very close to getting ready to use it. Okay. Yeah. I have to have some Lone Star beers next to me when I do that. I got <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh -oh. Make sure you can solve those riddles underneath <laughs> the bottle caps. Yeah. I'll try. Oh, yeah. I know thinking man's powder. beer. That's a thinking man's beer. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should. Maybe I shouldn't have the Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, you just said something. Corn hole, something. Well, uh, what is a it? Corn hole. It's a bag full of corn, and they throw it, and they were super serious about it. So it, it's on ESPN now. You can watch it on ESPN. It's uh, a bag of corn, and they take it and lift it. Bag like of yeah, I, I'm sure it started in the Midwest, but us hillbillies down south have taken over it. So we're. Uh, <laughs> They were out here. I, I think they had uh, 40 teams, something like that. Pitched pitch those cornhole bags all day and then had a band that night. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Big deal. It reminds me of actually, the, there's, a, you know, in the multicultural world, I went to Highlander games. And these there guys, were, they were, <laughs> I said, oh my God, this is crazy. All right. They'd be going down the hill and they'd be throwing things. Or how about that guy, those guys that throw the, uh, oh, yeah. Other, some other sport, but no, and don't they climb poles and yeah, the Highlander guys climb poles and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's I love that stuff. That's uh, that's like going to camp. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> for adults <laughs> and sometimes for, <laughs> for kids. Well, that's nice. And so, what are you doing? Are you working? You work? Um, I heard part time on the weekends. Yeah, he won't let. They won't. I can't get FDA certified to work any during regular hours, but. Um, <laughs> No, I'm a I'm an operations manager for a small oil and gas company, and when they added on, they added on the pit room, and so I've been coming with Robbie, and we cook, start cooking Friday, and serve on Saturday. So it's been a lot of fun. I've been teaching him how to barbecue. They've been doing this for 77 years, and they had to bring an in-law in to show him how to cook. You know, yeah, I so. I appreciate your situation. Uh, well, I, uh, <laughs> I would keep it tone it down a little. No, because, uh, <laughs> It it's looks hard like one, two, three, four, and yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's getting the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put a muffler on this guy. 
<laughs> I'll put a hole in the muscler. All right. So, 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 so now, uh, well, are you, so are you going to show us how to do the barbecue? <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll do it anytime you're ready. Oh, I'm in front of us. Are you are going to show us all the details <laughs> and how to no, we, we, we ain't going to oh. tell you everything we know. Okay, here we go. I'm ready to go. So we're gonna we're gonna move the computer over. Aaron, give them a, just give them a kind of a look around of the the pit room. Paul, have you have we seen the pit room before? No, no, no. Okay. no. Okay, so see behind me is this big 16 foot wide um, glass garage door. Wow. Which opens up into the to the banquet room. Okay. And then I'm just gonna kind of pivot around here and show you. There's JP back there and this is our big pit um, right here and it's loaded down right now i want to show you inside the firebox um we burn live wood here what kind of wood is it well we use a little bit of post oak and then we i can't hear you robbie can't hear you can you hear me so i can't hear you what kind of wood now I can hear you now. What kind of wood? Okay, it's pecan wood is what we use. Pecan wood, really? Is that yeah. is that uh, uh, is that grown in your area, or do you have to bring that in from somewhere? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty um, pretty common in East Texas, and uh, we've got a lot of hickory here too. Hickory sometimes can be a little harsher smoke, so um, anyway, we like to mix it. Sometimes we'll use hickory in here, but we also We'll uh, get a good base of uh, post oak sometimes, just the coals going if we've got some good dry post oak and then just throw our green pecan on top of it. All right, that's good. And can you end up with a pie at the end, a nice pecan pie? There you go. <laughs> I make there a nice go. pecan pie. I'll send you one. <laughs> <laughs> I love pecan pie. Oh, I my love God. pecan pie. Yeah, ice so, cream on uh, it, though. The, what's that? Ice cream on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just like uh, peach cobbler down here in the south. Oh, my God. You got that in the book. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. So, so what's I'm, next step? Okay. So I've got, um, I'm going to tilt this down. And you you may, may only be able to see our hands. I see the two trays. One tray. Oh, no, the, the meat. Yeah, this is a big cutting board. Uh, map, unwrap those, bud. Um, what we've got here on the left, Paul, is a is a big brisket. It's a, a USDA prime brisket, and it is a, a beautiful brisket. JP, these things turned out prettier than any I've seen so far. Um, really good quality. Yeah, and then, um, can you see that, Paul? I can see it beautifully. Okay. Good, good so, camera work. Then we've got a, a rack of, these are St. Louis style ribs, okay? And that's uh -huh. what we serve here at Bear Creek is a St. Louis style rib. Uh -huh. They've got nice marbling, you know, they're, they're pretty lean, but they do have a little bit of fat in them, which helps uh, uh, the bite, it, it makes them a little more tender. And then uh, the brisket, this is, like I said, a USDA prime, it's got a little uh, fat on the back of it and uh, mostly lean on the other side, but we won't have to trim this brisket at all. It's ready to go just the way it came in. Sometimes if you buy cheaper quality um, cuts or cheaper briskets, you know, you wind up. Um, I'm going to tilt this up for just a second. I can see perfect. Started. Oh, I, I, I was able to see okay. perfect. Now okay, I'm going to tilt, tilt it back down when I work on them. Oh, okay, but, okay. Um, so you're talking to me. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what I was going to say is these come in really nice like this to buy the better quality meat and you don't have to trim as much fat off, you know. Sure. Um, years ago, um, I'm going to say 30, 40 years ago, the big packing plants couldn't hardly give brisket away. You could buy brisket for about 25 cents a pound. And now all these barbecue houses have started up and, um, you know, they've made brisket a very high price cut of meat now, you know. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a great piece of meat to cook with. The key to it on briskets um, is low and slow, okay? So this is, I, I've told people before, this is it's a, a big, dumb hunk of meat, a piece of brisket. It's got a lot of uh, connective tissue, a lot of fat, sinew, and that kind of stuff in it. And if you try to cook it too fast, it's going to just squeeze the brisket down and tighten it up, and it's going to squeeze all the juice out of it. 
And about the only thing you're going to be able to do with it after that is make a nice pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> okay. Um, so what, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you how to rub it. We'll, we'll throw it on the pit here in a minute. And um, so what we like to do is uh, when I say low and slow, that goes for just about everything we cook on our smokers. Um, it just works better to extend the cook time out at a lower temperature and um, let that good uh, smoke flavor, you know, penetrate the meat. Um, but we like to cook at about 275 to 250, right around in there. And um, we're gonna put these briskets on here. The briskets, what time they go on, JP? 1.30. 1.30? Our briskets went on at 1.30. We're gonna probably smoke them till about 10 tonight, wrap them, and then they'll be ready to go for tomorrow's lunch. Uh, so, um, and you slice, it's a, it's, and you slice, how about the slice? This, isn't it important to know how to slice a piece of meat? Well, the slice, this one looks so pretty. I think we're gonna be able to slice it this way going all the way down. Yeah, you wanna, I'm gonna hold this up. You see okay. that? Yeah. You wanna slice it from the end right here and go right across this way with it. Okay. All right, across the grain. Um, but anyway, if, if you cook them low and slow like that, they'll turn out great every time. Now. For folks at home that don't have a smoker, you can do it um, in a crock pot. You can do it in the oven, but I, I strongly recommend that you do it at the lowest setting you can put on your um, oven. And that's usually about 175, 200, something like that. But yeah, and I would recommend um, if you're gonna do them in the oven, probably we use what they call uh, pink paper. Um, tear me off a piece of that. It's, um, it's some paper that we wrap briskets in. A lot of, you're gonna recognize this, a lot of butchers have this, yeah, okay? Yeah. Um, there you go. Um, if you're gonna cook them in the oven, I'd heavily recommend, or strongly recommend, put them in a, in a dish and covering it with uh, aluminum foil, you know, to help keep the moisture in. Okay, all right. So, um, anyway, and then for the ribs, uh, you know, these, We'll put these on. Did we put ribs on already? Okay, we've got some ribs on there. It usually, they usually cook within about four or four and a half hours, something like that uh -huh. at, at, at 250. And I wish you were gonna be here later tonight because we're gonna be hanging out, um, eating ribs, throwing shiny bones over in the corner and, and um, wondering what everybody else is doing in New York City. Well, I'll be um, crying knowing there is no. I'll be happy for you. I'll be <laughs> Have you have, but let me ask. I, I know that since I had the brisket, you were able to ship some brisket, you know, in that nice little packet. That packaging, right. I said, Come on, is this really going to work? I opened that up and I, I heated it just a little in the pan, and I'm telling you, I'm in heaven. And, and I know my brisket. And so, then, two, <laughs> my question to you is this on the ribs, do you sell ribs too? Uh, as you send ribs, we, uh, Paul, we don't. It's um, that would be a hard one, right. Yeah, it's it's hard with as much bone as ribs have in them. It's kind of hard to keep them um, the vacuum seal to stay intact. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, a lot of times they'll lose their seal. So we just we used to try to do ribs, and we we'd get a lot of what they call leakers, and now we don't even fool with it. So, uh, right. but we do serve them for lunch here on Saturdays, and I would love for you to get on a a jet airplane and head down here tonight. We'd show you some of the best Southern hospitality you've ever seen. As soon as this COVID's over, I know where I'm going, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Bring it on. I kept Bring it on. I mean, I'm serious about that. I, uh, that's all good. So, so you have them, that are gonna cook later tonight. All right, so now you have a rub. What, is a, what does rub mean? Well, uh, this is, we, we put together this rub. This is a, a brisket and rib rub. It works great for both. It use, it's great for a seasoning on chicken just about anything, but you know, it's salt, uh, pepper, a little uh, red pepper, um, garlic powder. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not a hard concoction. We put it together and sell it in these little jars just to, um, for the convenience sake of not having to mix all those spices up at home. And when do you do that? I mean, some people, don't people like uh, uh, keep, keep the, like the, Brisket, I mean, what do they do? You know, keep it overnight in, in some juice or something? What, what is that? Uh, um, that's a, more, of a, more of a marinade. Um, a marinade, is, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, this is what you call a dry rub, okay? So we're gonna okay. rub these down with a dry rub and then we're just gonna toss them right on the smoker. 
So and, and that holds on. That, that dry rub holds on uh, uh, strong enough to uh, keep. I mean, I am I'm a garlic powder, onion powder kind of guy, and yeah. uh, and and or maybe some flavoring too. Um, and so, but you know that that that's where you go on it. Really, this this rub must be out of sight because I'm sure. Oh that, yeah. That, that, that brisket. So on that brisket that you sent me, that was rubbed with that. Yeah, we're gonna rub them with this, and uh, it's gonna stick. I'll promise you. I'm gonna show you here in just a minute. I'm gonna prove it to okay. you. Okay. All right. Um, one thing I want to show you, Matt. You want to help me do this sure. because I want to talk to you a little bit about ribs. I'm gonna move this down and a little closer so you can see what we have here. What rack of ribs? Paul, can you see that? I, I can't hear can you. Can you see the ribs, Paul? I can see the ribs, but I can't hear. I can, now I can just hear you, but here you. you okay, you talk and I'll uh, you get. Go, on. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try to go ahead, Robbie. I couldn't hear you if you're talking. Can you hear me now? Oh my talking. God! What do we do? Paul, can you hear me? No, not well. No, oh, if you're talking, I can't hear you. I think the speaker's down here. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Is that better? You got to be in front of it, Robbie. You get back here behind me and I'll get it. Switch positions. That, there you go, like this. Okay, is that better, Paul? Yep, now it's good. Okay, all right. So uh, on the ribs, what you what you got on the back side of these ribs, uh, hold it up just a little bit more for them, Matt. On the back side of these ribs, you've got what they call silver skin, okay? And what we're gonna do is take, normally you can just take a knife and get right under the edge of it and uh, you can pull that silver skin off. And what that does, it makes it easier for the, for the rub to penetrate into the meat and it also makes it easier to eat. Um, you know, when you get a finished product. Matt, you need a paper towel. Can you see that coming off of there? Yeah, Paul? I can see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold him up, Matt, so he can. I think I've made them before and I think I left the skin on. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a, it's a silver skin. So it's just, you pull that off. Now that, that just makes a whole lot better finished product. Um, yeah. See that, how clean and pretty it is. Now we pull that, that silver skin off and then the backside is beautiful too. I'm gonna let Matt rub that down. And um, so what we do, we just, uh, one of the, ingredients in the in the rub is salt so you know we don't get it too heavy uh because there's a lot of other spices in there too and um so we just put a light coat on both sides i don't know if he's getting that or not i saw it there we go let's get the other side now Matt. all right so that's about as good as it gets now we're just going to rub that uh rub that in on both sides I hope let's hold him up. See now that just you can see it on there now, right? I see it. That baby's ready for the pit. Oh man. This is torture. Are we making you hungry? All right, man. Torture. That yeah, right. There. torture. <laughs> Me and my big ideas. Why did I put myself through this? This is crazy. I know. What are you thinking? <laughs> I think I'm crazy. I think I uh, I should have just come down. That was it. <laughs> hey, us people in the oil and gas industry love to see you get on an airplane. I, I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> you give me a flight right into the uh, barbecue pit? <laughs> there, right. there you go. We'll pick you up at Shreveport. Marshall <laughs> International Airport. Uh, so you see the back of that? Can you see the coloring on it now since yeah, we've got the... Great. The rub, that's a, that's a beautiful piece of meat. I'm going to let Matt put these on the smoker. We're going to, JP, can you handle that? And uh, which door are we going to? Uh, door number two. Okay, Paul. Not many people get to see behind the scenes, okay? Thank you, my friend. <laughs> I, feel, I feel now like this is like Price is Right. And then door number two? Uh, door number two? Okay. Door number two. Wow. 
I was a big smoker. What is a smoker? What what makes a smoker a smoker, Robbie? Hold on, let me get this lid down. Yeah, when you get ready, tell me what a smoker is. Okay, JP, let's get him around here. Uh, well, it's the heat and the smoke for this thing are all generated by wood, by logs. We're burning real logs in there, okay? And um, so with with the with the logs, we can regulate our heat depending on how many logs we put on the fire. And so it, it becomes just kind of an art form, you know, to be able to keep that uh, that smoker at the right. Sorry, my eyes are watering. My eyes are smoked, okay? I saw, yeah. Um, uh, it kind of becomes an art form <coughs> to kind of keep an eye on that smoker and, and regulate the, the fire in it. Okay. To keep this big old thing sitting on the right temperature, you know. Uh -huh. um, but as the wood burns, um, it's also releasing a lot of smoke. So, you know, uh, the the fire and the smoke are, are generated at the same time. Now, there's a, you said door number two. So how many doors and do you put the wood in one, one, or four doors, four I, smokers, I got, and what you put the wood in the, in the front and it goes all the way to the four? Uh huh. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get you another shot of this. Oh, I see it, man. I see it. Uh huh. Wow. Okay. So, okay. So the fire is in one end of it. And then, it's hooked on to one end, but here's, here's the air box fuels this whole big pit right here. Uh -huh. We've got four big doors. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? I can, can hear, hear it. And, and nice camera work, Robbie. Yeah, you, you, you're you're competing with me now. You got you want my you want to be a production guy. Well, no, I no, sir. All I want to do is smoke meat. Okay. You call me every now and then, I'll show you. All I want to do is smoke meat. What are you talking? I'm dying. I, I want to cook. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, so see right here. Um, this is where the exhaust comes out. I can't hear you, Robbie. And then so um, the heat and smoke are generated on one end and it exits on the other. And then all of our meat is between the generate the heat end and the exit end. Do you give it a flip? You flip it to me? Yeah, we will. We'll we'll flip it. Um, probably somewhere before we take it off tonight. Uh huh. Sorry about my eyes, but I tell you what, smoke's pretty strong. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh man, that's fantastic, Robbie. Yeah. This is what a what a lucky guy I am here. Well, I I feel like a lucky guy just knowing you and getting to <laughs> getting to share this with you. You know. It's all good. Southern Select beer. Was that a real beer in those days? It was, yeah. Um, so my wife has reclassified me from collector to hoarder. I collect all kinds of old stuff. I said, baby, at least I'm an organized hoarder. And uh, I have it displayed nicely. But yeah, Southern Select was actually started by Howard Hughes in Galveston, Texas, back in the 20s wow. or 30s, I think. Yeah. So um, anyway, we just try to for our decorations, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go around here and show you. We we like to use a lot of old signs and um, you know animal heads. Just can't hear you. Can't hear you. Good right there. Right. So um, we we try to make it a, a fun environment for people to come here and and eat barbecue and take in all the stuff we've got to look at at Bear Creek. All right, it's a beautiful thing, Robbie. Thank you, my friend. Anything else you wanted to mention about the smoking and everything? So I make sure I got it all in for. If anybody wants to fly in from New York City, I guarantee you we're going to make it worth their while once they show up. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Robbie, peace for you. And the, the good news today for you is what? What's good news today for you? Good news to me is my family. They were all here with me today, except for my son. He's the plant manager, uh, Hunter. Wish he could have been over, um, but. I tell you what, we've got so much going on in that processing plant right now. He just couldn't squeeze away. He knew about it and I was hoping he would make it. But um, happiness is getting to go to work every day with the people you love the most. There you go. All right, Robbie, uh, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk again soon.
All right, and if people want to, uh, what's the website again for people if they want to order from you, make their life easier on Thanksgiving? You know that because of the scenario we're all living in now, uh, uh, yeah. making Thanksgiving actually a very uh, different right. Thanksgiving for right. Life. So, so it, it, I think it's kind of really a good opportunity, uh, especially uh, for you know buying foods and having them delivered. Uh, to give my buddy Robbie a call, everyone. Because uh, uh, if I, you're not I going to family's house, which, you know, and actually in this state, they just gave a 10 person limit to a family's house. That's and what I heard. That's what I heard. Down, you know, so, so if that's not going to happen, that's it, as long as we're together in, in mind and spirit and body, we got to do what we got to do here to deal with whatever's happening to us. But, uh, you give Robbie a call. What's the website? Because I'll okay. tell you right now, you can have that brisket. I'll tell you. <laughs> you can yeah, we'll ship it right to your front door. Get that um, brisket. <laughs> yes, sir. Check us out. Bear oh, Creek the turkey. Smokehouse. That turkey. That's oh, yeah. Did you turkey. like that? Oh, that was magnificent. And I yeah. love turkey. Yeah. Okay. We got, I, got, I got it up here. Oh, um, every, everything. And the bacon. Like, don't start me because I there, there was there's nothing I didn't like. So I hear you. I hear you. Well, is what? Where do they go? Uh, it's BearCreekSmokehouse.com, and um, get on there. We we have got a ton of different things to choose from on there as far as smoked meats go. We'll make your life a lot easier, more time to spend with your family, less time in the kitchen, and um, you know if you follow us on Facebook, it's Bear Creek Smokehouse. Um, we've got a ton of followers all across the world. So, um, we'd love, if you're watching, we'd love to have you visit someday. Um, we guarantee you we'll, by the time you leave, we'll make you feel like part of the family. <laughs> and you can stay at Robbie's house. We guarantee it. <laughs> you know what I love about Robbie? Because he might be your father, but he's treating you like a son, and I can see that. That's a beautiful thing. And you're treating him like a dad. All right. I'll yeah, see you guys that. later, man. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Thank you.